Are your friends doing things with their iPhones you wish you knew how to do? The truth is, your iPhone has a ton of hidden features. Some are everyday tips that your friends already know how to use. Some are powerful tools they may not know. And some are brand new in iOS 26 that you can actually show them. Today I'll walk you through how to use each one of these features so that you can start using them right away. Let's kick things off with some everyday hidden tips. These are the classics, the things your friends probably already know, but they're so useful that you should be using them too. On the lock screen, most people still keep the camera shortcut, but you really don't need it because the camera is already just a swipe left away. Plus newer iPhones have the camera button built in. So instead, replace the camera widget with something more useful, like a calculator shortcut, for example. Just long press on your lock screen, click Customize, delete the camera widget, then click the plus sign that remains there. Then you can choose from countless numbers of controls, depending on how many apps you have loaded on your phone. Select the one you want, such as a calculator, and click Done at the top right. Then touch the screen to complete the changes. This next tip will help you crop and straighten your photos quickly. Choose a photo you wish to edit to be able to crop, straighten, flip, or rotate a photo. In this photo, for example, the letters are reversed. Select the slider icon at the bottom. Now select the crop icon at the bottom. Select the flip icon at the top left. And now let's straighten the photo by adjusting this slider at the bottom. And then also notice that this photo was taken at a slight angle. So we want to make that adjustment. Select the horizontal and slide that over till it looks like we were standing squarely in front of it when we took the photo. Now that everything looks straight and correct, we can select done at the top. Now our photo looks exactly like we want. By the way, if you're unhappy with your photo edits, select the icon again at the bottom and then click revert at the top right. Now select Revert to Original. This restores it to the original condition, so no harm done. Here's a time saver you need to know for your camera app. In the camera app, if you're in the photo mode, but you want a video, don't waste time switching to video mode. Just press and hold the shutter button down and your iPhone will instantly start recording video. You can release it to stop, or as you're holding the shutter button, if you decide you want to take a longer video, slide your finger to the right to lock for continuous recording. Here's a quick text editing tip that everyone needs to know. Editing text can be frustrating. Moving the cursor with your finger never seems to be quite precise. But if you press and hold the space bar, then the entire keyboard becomes a trackpad. You can slide your finger around and place the cursor exactly where you want it. That's a feature I use all the time. If it helps you, let me know in the comments below. Here's another hidden feature. Try long pressing on an app icon, and you may be surprised at how many options are available depending on the app. Instead of just opening the app, you'll have quick shortcuts, such as viewing your orders or what's in your cart on your Amazon app, or perhaps looking at your purchase history on your Walmart app, or being able to create a new contact to your contacts app. It's a great time saver. This next tip is buried deep in settings, but it's so handy. There's a hidden feature called Backtap under Accessibility. I use this now to quickly open the Magnifier app when reviewing fine print. Just go to Settings, Accessibility, Touch, Backtap, select either the double or the triple tap, depending on your preference, to trigger things like the magnifier or a screenshot or even a shortcut you've created. And once you get used to it, you'll wonder how you ever lived without it. There are countless apps to choose from, so you may want to spend a moment looking through the various options. All right, now that we've covered the everyday basics, let's step it up. These next tips are a little more hidden. Power features that you may not know, but once you learn them, you'll be way ahead. A lot of people have asked how to hide a photo. Maybe you've got a before and after picture from an injury or a surgery or just an embarrassing snapshot that you don't want others to see when scrolling through your photo gallery. Here's how to do it. Open the photo that you want to hide, tap the ellipsis at the top right, and select hide. It moves it to a hidden album. And here's the important part. In iOS, the hidden album is locked behind Face ID, so nobody else can open it. To find them again, scroll down to the Utilities in the Photos app, and you'll see the hidden album. To unhide the photo, just click on the ellipsis again and select Unhide. Also notice while you're in the photo, you can click the I for information, and it'll tell you exactly where this photo was taken 
provided you had location services turned on. Your friends may be surprised when you show them this. If your iPhone feels cluttered, you don't have to delete the apps. You just need to hide whole pages. Long press on the home screen, tap the dots at the bottom, and uncheck the pages that you want to hide. This is a perfect way if you want a clean look. And it does not delete the apps, it just hides them. You can always go back and re-add them if you like by following these same steps then clicking to select them. If you need to hide a specific app, just select the app that you want to hide, press and hold the app icon until a menu appears. Tap Require Face ID, tap Hide and Require Face ID, and authenticate with your Face ID or passcode. Confirm by tapping Hide App in the pop-up menu. This will remove the app from your home screen, but keep in mind it will also remove the app from your search results and notification previews. It will also place the app in a password-protected hidden folder in the app library. If you change your mind and want to restore it, go to the app library, find the hidden folder icon at the bottom, and click on the hidden folder, then long press on the app and select Don't Require Face ID, and it will restore the app so that you can receive those notifications again. If you are struggling with this next tip, you are not alone. Just when you think you've deleted a voicemail, it's not really deleted until you do this. Go to the phone app, click voicemail, and scroll to the bottom. And you may see deleted voicemails. If so, click on that. Now you'll see all the voicemails you thought you deleted. Click the clear all button. Then this will finally delete all of those voicemails that you thought you had deleted before. Sometimes there's just an easier way. This is an example of that. You don't need to download a tip calculator app. Open the shortcuts app, select gallery, then search for tip, select calculate tip, click add shortcut, and now you'll have that shortcut tip ready to add to control center. Now let's open control center, click in the empty space at the bottom, select add a control, type in shortcuts in the search bar, select shortcut, now select choose to choose the shortcut that we just added a moment ago, choose that shortcut, then click back in the space, and now you'll see your calculate tip in your control center, and it'll be right there for you the next time you're in a restaurant. Speaking of shortcuts, there's another shortcut that I highly recommend you use. If you're like me, sometimes your phone just starts running out of battery from all the usage of the day. Let's set up an automation so that when your phone hits 20% battery, your phone will automatically go into low power mode. To do this, go to the Shortcuts app, select Automation, click the plus sign, or click New Automation. Scroll down to Battery Level. Adjust the slider to equal 20%. Choose Run Immediately and Notify When Run. Select Next. Scroll to Set Low Power Mode at the top. Now when your battery level is at 20%, it's going to turn on Low Power Mode once we hit this check mark. And now the automation is set. And every time your battery hits 20%, this will automatically run for you. Low power mode limits things like automatic downloads and background app refresh that will make your battery last longer until you have an opportunity to charge it. If you like to wear AirPods or headphones, this next tip is really important. Go to Settings, Sounds and Haptics, select Headphone Safety, and change that slider. Select the maximum decibel level you want to hear when you are wearing headphones or AirPods. This is a personal choice, but I set mine at 85 decibels because that is as loud as heavy city traffic and that's not enough for me. According to the National Institutes of Health, overexposure to intense sounds can destroy hair cells in your ears, resulting in permanent hearing damage, which is irreversible. In other words, once your hearing is damaged, your ears don't regenerate. This little setting can save your long-term hearing health. If you're finding these tips helpful, please click that subscribe button. It's free to do. Now for the fun part. Brand new features in iOS 26. These are the ones that just came out so chances are your friends don't even know they exist. You can be the one to show them. If you're a fan of closed captions, now in FaceTime, you can turn on live captions. Now, if you're talking to someone in FaceTime, you can see what they're saying right on the screen as you speak. 
To set this up, go to Settings, search for FaceTime, scroll down towards the bottom and you'll see Live Captions. Toggle that on. And then also while we're here, I recommend toggling on both unknown callers and FaceTime spam to prevent those unwanted FaceTime calls. You can have a lot of fun with this next tip. Also new in iOS 26, Apple has finally let you customize text threads with backgrounds. So you can choose from built-in backgrounds, use your own photos, or even generate new ones with Apple Image Playground. To set this up, select a text thread that you wish to add a background to, click on the name of the person or group, and select backgrounds. Here you'll see a number of suggestions where you can make your choices along with colors or you can select photos. Many options to personalize the background of your text thread. It's also important to know that once you change this, the person you're texting with will also see this change as long as they're on iOS 26. They have the option to make a different selection, so you may have to reach an agreement. This option is not available to use when texting someone who does not have an iPhone. If you're struggling to make a decision, this next tip may really help. When you're planning a group dinner, for example, and you're trying to decide on the best cuisine, you can just create a poll in the group text and let everyone vote. No more confusing back and forth text. Just click the plus sign, scroll down and select polls, and then fill in the options. Check out this new feature before you download an app. When you browse the App Store, you'll now see accessibility labels on app pages. They tell you if the app supports features like voiceover, voice control, larger text, etc. before you download it. So no more guesswork. And before we wrap up, here's one final bonus tip. It's not flashy, but it can save you from making one of the most common texting mistakes. This is a powerful habit that will help you prevent embarrassing texts. Write your text message first, then select the recipient's name. That way you never risk accidentally sending a half-finished thought or the wrong message to the wrong person. Your iPhone was made for so much more than phone calls, texting, and browsing social media. There's so many hidden features that you need to know how to use, so I hope you found this helpful. So there you go. Everyday tips, hidden power features, brand new iOS 26 tips. So which ones did you already know? Or which one are you going to try first? Let me know in the comments. A heartfelt thanks to all my subscribers. I really appreciate you, and you make this channel possible. If you found these tips helpful today, please click that subscribe button. It's free to do, and I look forward to seeing you next time. And in the meantime, please watch this iPhone tip video.